We'll move on to the number one kind of fantasy spot that we always got to keep an eye on. You know, this position wins or loses you leagues potentially. Obviously, it's the running back spot. So some honorable mentions, the Chargers, they've been in almost uh, literally every list except for quarterback here. With Austin Eckler, he's going to be moving on after this year. So especially if we're talking dynasty, I probably have the Chargers in my top five. Um, I'm, this is kind of just an overall conversation and they are listed uh, in, in order, but more of a redraft kind of focus. But if this is dynasty, I'm putting the chargers up in my top five for sure. So Eckler probably won't be there after this year. Highly unlikely. Uh, he's already not happy. Kellen Moore likes to potentially likes to use, you know, a power back towards the goal line. If we look at what Ezekiel Elliott uh, did last year for the, for the Cowboys, um, so this could be a good spot for a power back, a guy like maybe uh, Chris Rodriguez or, or Dwayne McBride, a guy like that. If they go to the Chargers, I'm going to be taking a very, very strong look at them in the you know second, third round, that sort of a thing. Jaguars, same sort of things I just said about the Chargers. You can apply to the Jags. Uh, Doug Peterson likes to use multiple running backs. He did in in uh, Philly. He said it publicly that he wants to, you know, keep guys fresh and use the hot hand and things like that. Obviously, I know ETN's there. He's gonna be there. He's gonna continue to be there. But you can't you can't tell me there's not enough uh, football for more than one running back to eat in that offense. It's it's a much improved offense. The offensive lines in a in a quite good spot. I think they address it in the draft as well. Um, very, very quality quarterback. Obviously, again, Doug Peterson running the offense. I'm happy with that. So that's another spot for another type of a, a power back. And uh, a name that I want to keep top of mind or, or in the back of your mind for this whole conversation there are two guys, Ezekiel Elliott and Kareem Hunt. Not for nothing, you know, they could go in and be the power back on any of these teams, especially Ezekiel Elliott. And that's what I see his role as this year i think someone certainly signs ezekiel elliott and it could be this team behind me uh with the ohio state connection um and then he can walk in and be that power back like he was last year for the cowboys and get you double digit touchdowns and i don't care if he gets 600 yards if he's getting me double digit touchdowns i got zeke elliott on my roster personally so that's another spot to keep an eye on uh the arizona cardinals i you know it could be a really good spot but they're just going to be a really really bad team I honestly think that they could be the worst team in the league last year, next year, sorry. So yeah, James Conner's still there as well. That that hurts it. So, and again, in a dynasty format, maybe you could bump up the Cardinals a little bit, but um, I, I just don't, don't see it for this year. So again, they're just an honorable mention. Let's kick off the top five. This team has been connected to the number one running back in the draft. If he ends up going there, obviously it's B. John Robinson. If he ends up going to the Philadelphia Eagles, uh, that's going to be, you know, he's already, he's already the one one So there's nothing you can do about that unless you have that pick, but in a redraft setting, man, he, he's going to be high on a lot of people's lists. If, uh, if he ends up going to the Eagles, I'm not sure if he does. I, I don't personally think he goes at uh, number 10. I don't think the, the Eagles take Bijan because it would only be Bijan. But I'll say a running back. I don't think they'll take a running back at 10. I don't think they'll get him at 30 either. So they're going to have to trade up from 30 if they want him. I think they make their selection at 10. We'll see how the draft goes. And again, keep an eye out for my mock draft. It'll be live on Monday night. Um, if they draft him or, or end up getting him later in the draft, trade up with maybe the Bucks at 19. I think that that's a quality, you know, spot that I could see him going is 19, regardless. Um, and if he goes to the Eagles, then that's that's going to be insane. So, but if he doesn't, a guy like Chris Rodriguez, again, uh, McBride, a power back, maybe a guy like Tank Bigsby that I really like, Chase Brown, guys like that. Let's keep an eye on the Philadelphia Eagles because it's it's a quality spot, number five on the list for a running back. Number four, Dallas Cowboys. I know they have da uh, Tony Pollard. A lot of people are hoping and wanting and thinking that he's going to be, you know, a 20-touch a guy, 15 to 20 touches a game. It's just not what you, you want to get out of Tony Pollard. Realistically, you want 12 to 16 touches total out of Tony Pollard a game, and then you want another guy getting 8 to 12. That's the way I look at it. Look at what happened with Zeke last year. That's a split that I like to see. Makes tons of sense. And again, Tony Pollard coming off that uh, that injury. That's a concern. 
uh, franchise tag. So in a, in a dynasty format, we could see the Cowboys be in an even better landing spot. So that's what I like. They like to run the ball. Um, uh, McCarthy's already said, Mike McCarthy's already said that he wants to run the ball more. Uh, that was a big reason why the fallout with Kellen Moore happened. Mike McCarthy is going to be calling plays for the Cowboys this year. They're going to want to run the ball more. And Tony Pollard's not a 20 to 25 carries type of a running back. He's just not that guy. And he's never going to be that guy. And you don't want to do that to him, right? He's only 25 years old. He's good at what he does. And he's great at what he does. So you might as well just keep keep rolling with that, uh, that role that you have with Tony Pollard. Get another guy in here that can beat out those backups and be that guy. Number three. Miami Dolphins, very, very quality spot to go. I know they have Jeff Wilson. I know they have Raheem Mostert. And I know that Mike uh, McDaniel really likes those guys. But I think that there's absolutely room, again, especially in the dynasty format. Big caveat here is uh, Dalvin Cook is very heavily rumored to be a, a target for the Miami Dolphins. I could certainly see that happening. Uh, it's definitely a place that uh, I think he would fit. He's a Florida guy. Makes tons of sense. Could be a trade or a cut, and they just sign them. All that sort of stuff. So we'll see what they do in the draft. If they do draft a guy, that's a guy I'm, I'm going to look to target. If they don't, I'm basically chalking it up that they're getting Dalvin Cook, more or less is how I'm looking at it. Um, so again, if, if a guy can come in there as a rookie and uh, you know Jeff Wilson hasn't stayed healthy his whole career at all, Raheem Mostert certainly hasn't stayed healthy. They're both at or pushing 30. I think Mostert is 30. I think Jeff Wilson's 29, something like that. They're right around 30. So you get a rookie to come in here as long as he can beat out, you know, Salvin Ahmed, guys like that. I'm really not concerned. But again, if they don't draft a guy, I'm thinking, I'm basically chalking that up that Dalvin Cook is going to be a Dolphin um, after he gets either traded or, or cut from the, the Minnesota Vikings. So quality spot, quality offensive coach, decent uh, offensive line, one that I think that they could address uh, in this year's draft. And I think that they will, they don't have a first round pick after forfeiting that trying to, you know, schmooze Tom Brady a little early. Um, but if they, if they address the offensive line and then, you know, again, third, fourth, fifth round running backs, that that's, that's relatively high draft capital to be honest with you. Again, the poster boy for this whole episode, uh, Damian Pierce was a fourth round running back. So, there you go. Fourth round running back goes to the Miami Dolphins. That's going to definitely move the needle for me. I'm going to be paying attention to that. Moving on to number two. So number two is a bit of a heartbreaker for me. Um, I was always a massive, massive believer in Javante Williams. Massive believer. Um, but what he did to his knee last year was, was really, really not good. I've always been a guy that's avoided running backs that have torn their ACL, I will not touch them the year after. I just will not. So Brees Hall's off my board this year. Javante Williams is off my board this year. Worked out for me with Dalvin Cook. Worked out for me with uh, Saquon Barkley. I'm just going to keep rolling on that uh, on that train and, and keep it on the tracks. That's the way that I'm, I'm attacking those two running backs this year as far as my draft board is concerned. So Samaji P. Ryan comes in. You, look, you can see the jerseys behind me. Huge Bengals fan. He, he's not going to be a guy that's going to be some sort of bell cow for this team. He's, he's a quality player, decent third down back. He can catch the ball to the backfield. He's responsible in the, in pass pro, but he's certainly not your guy. If, if they, if they go out and they draft a guy in the third round with, a, with I think is completely plausible second, third round, even a guy that comes in and, and uh, you know, let's say they get Zach Charbonnet. If they go ahead and get Zach Charbonnet, that's going to really hurt uh, Javante Williams, but that's going to boost Zach Charbonnet up a ton. In my opinion, he should get above Jameer Gibbs, depending on where he gets drafted, but he should move ahead of Jameer Gibbs if that's the landing spot, the, the Denver Broncos for Zach Charbonnet. So quality offensive line that they invested in in the offseason. Um, Russell Wilson, say what you want, but it's still Russell Wilson, and hopefully he figures it out. You know, with Sean Payton coming in, that's another thing right there. Sean Payton comes in to run this team. Couldn't really ask for a better offensive mind. So there you go. I think that this is a great spot. They got quality wide receivers. This is a fantastic spot with Javante Williams already pretty much scheduled to miss games in 2023 early. Uh, and Samaj P. Ryan really being your only competition. 
I think it's a great spot. So you get a good quality running back coming in. And again, if it's a guy that's high on your board, if this is the landing spot, you might throw him to the top of your list right behind Bijan Robinson because he's not going anywhere. It is what it is. But there you go. Denver Broncos, number two landing spot for a running back. Moving on to number one. This is not a homer pick at all. <laughs> Trust me on that. Number one landing spot for a running back in this year's draft is the team you see behind me, the Cincinnati Bengals. Why? Well, a few reasons. Number one, Joe Mixon... I think it's time for him to go. Uh, there's a lot of lot of things going on with Joe Mixon. Number one, he's not the greatest human being on the planet to begin with. Number two, multiple uh, gun-related issues, charges potentially coming up. Uh, one happened the day before the, the AFC Championship game. That's pretty annoying and upsetting for me. Uh, who knows what the truth is on those things? You know, the 100% truth. Obviously, we know the truth about what happened, you know, before he came into the NFL. We certainly know that truth. But uh, with all these new accusations and, and gun-related issues coming up, we don't know what the truth is yet. And, you know, we'll see what happens with his legal issues. But regardless, I think it's time for a change. I think it's time that we move on from Joe Mixon. I've never been, and if you've been a fan of this channel, I've never been a huge supporter of Joe Mixon. And it's not just because I don't particularly love him as a person. It's because he's not that good of a running back, period. He never has been, and he never will be. Um, he just always is trying to hit home runs. He Every time he touches the ball, he wants to take it to the crib for a 50-yard touchdown. There's Sometimes you got to take two, three, four, five yards. You got to get what you can get move north south there's just too much east west with him and it drives me nuts i think any other running back in any other quality quality enough running back in the nfl would do just as good have just as good a numbers if they had the volume that joe mixon has had throughout his career with cincinnati beyond all that beyond all that they save over 10 million dollars for the next two years if they cut him post june 1 I think that that's absolutely 100% what happens. It's been in the news. It's not, you know, it's not crazy breaking news over here, but uh, it just it just doesn't make sense to keep them. It's it's a total of just over five million in dead money over two years, and you save over 20 million in in uh, cap savings over two years. I think it's just a no brainer. It's time to go. Uh, one thing that I could see this team potentially doing, um, they certainly won't trade up in the first round to get Bijan Robinson. I think that would be great. I just, it's never going to happen. I know, I know the Bengals obviously look at the, the guard behind me here. I know this team, they will not trade up in the first round. They just don't, they barely ever trade at all. Um, so I fully expect them to stay where they're at in, in every round for the most part. I I'm always just floored if they do trade at any point. Uh, if they can get me John Robinson where they're at, amazing. I'm ecstatic, extremely happy. He's already the 101 anyways. In re redrafts, if I have the 101 in a redraft, I'm probably taking B. John Robinson if he goes to my Bengals. But I don't particularly expect him to be there. And uh, so it is what it is. But if they go with a guy like Jameer Gibbs, I don't particularly see them doing that either. Personally, I think they take a corner in the first round. And again, keep an eye out for my mock draft live streaming on Monday. Um, but running back's the spot that they're going to address. It might be second round. Again, it's a late round pick in the second, late round pick in the third, fourth, fifth. They have a late round pick in every round and they probably won't trade. They'll just st stick and pick. So we'll see who they end up getting. They will 100% be drafting a running back. That you can take to the bank. And whoever it is, I'm going to be definitely putting some uh, some fantasy capital into. One, one thing I think they could do, like I just said, Jameer Gibbs, if they get a guy like him, and then they go ahead and sign you know local guy, Ezekiel Elliott. I think that thunder and lightning would be phenomenal for this team. That's an, a, a massive upgrade for anything they've had at running back for a lot of years that they have that one-two punch with the offensive line. Offensive coordinator's in a good spot. Like I said, the offensive line is, is very good, better than it's probably ever been since I've been a Cincinnati Bengal fan. And uh, we'll see what they do, but... Any running back that goes to Cincinnati, that's a spot that I'm I'm absolutely keying on. My number one spot for a running back. And uh, there you go. 